it's a humbling experience, you know, losing your foot and then having to find out your identity, especially through high school and then going through college. So there was a lot of like soul seeking and like a lot of time that I needed to spend on reflecting on me and, and developing myself and like figuring out like who am I and why was I created? What is up, y'all? Our last guest of the day is incredible. We're ending with a big bang. He's a professional athlete, um, amazing guy, role model, and two-time two -time Paralympic medal winner, right? Nice. I get it right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, say his name. Check, check, check. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Trenton Merrill. Yeah, good. Good. Trenton. You got it right. <laughs> oh, man, I was like, check, 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 check. I mean, you have an amazing story. Thank you. You really do. So, Appreciate I mean, it, right? you got into an accident when you were 14. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It changed your life. But it didn't, you know, in some ways you made it work for you. And it, you always wanted to be an athlete and you didn't let it stop you. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, when I was 14, my life drastically changed. Mm -hmm. I was hit by a car with my best friend, Scott. And I thought that my dreams of becoming a professional athlete were taken away immediately. Um, especially right when I found out that my leg had to be amputated. Oh, wow. So... When I got my first prosthetic, I was able to start walking again. And once I was able to start jogging, I was like, dude, let's just find out what I can and can't do instead of what other people are telling me. And I just went right back into sports. Wow. What, now, what, what kind of sports were you playing before you had your accident? I was racing motocross. I was playing soccer. I tried most sports, um, hockey and baseball. But soccer and motocross were my favorite. And what are, what are the events that you compete in in, in the Paralympics? Yeah, so in Rio, I competed in long jump, and then oh, wow. in Tokyo, I competed in the 200 and long jump, and then the medals from uh, Tokyo long jump. Lo the long jump, what's, yep. what's your long jump record? My best is 775 meters, so 25 feet. Wow, and what's, wow. what are the, what's the, uh, God, I hate to, you know, you seem like it's you're okay. not easily offended. What's no, no, no. The, the, the regular uh, long jump, like, rec well, what's a good distance for like a regular 26. Long jump? Okay. Yeah, 26 so, feet. So, wow. Eight meters. Wow. Anything over eight meters, yeah, you're going to be a potential medal contestant. Now, you weren't doing those track events before your accident. You kind of like, you said, okay, this is a sport that I can do with, you call it um, a, a prosthetic. A prosthetic yeah. blade, right? Is that what you compete yeah. with? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, were you kind of like, okay, this is the sport that I can do, so let me go into that? Because you weren't doing track before. That's true. So, in middle school, I knew that I was fast and I, I wanted <laughs> to do uh, track and field when I got to high school, but. I lost my foot my freshman year, mm -hmm. and so it, I just didn't even think about it. And then my first year at community college, I was introduced into the Paralympics, and I was like, well, this is a whole new world. Like, God's got some crazy different plans for me, and uh, then I just went all in. Wow. Did it change your outlook on life before you discovered that you could do this? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, it's a humbling experience, you know, losing your foot and then having to find out your identity, especially through high school and then going through college. So there was a lot of like soul seeking and like a lot of time that I needed to spend on reflecting on me and, and developing myself and like figuring out like, who am I and why was I created? Mm. Yeah. I was going to say, too, it's kind of serendipitous because October is Disability Awareness yeah. Month, right? So what do you think were, like, those qualities that helped you get through? Was it, like, courage? Um, did you really have a supportive family with you? Like, what, what kind of got you through those hard times? I would say both those, for sure. Mm -hmm. What helped me get through the hard times, for sure, my friends and my family, no mm -hmm. doubt. I always leaned on them when I was going through really hard times and the hardest of times. And for me, it was not being afraid to fail. So that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the, the biggest thing is just not being afraid to fail, because for me, I, I saw that failure was, um, you know, someone that was, that was not willing to try someone that would rather sit in the stands instead of go out there and just just go compete. Be you. Mm -hmm. Now, so you, when you're competing, you're obviously around other Paralympians who are taking the same approach as you. Nothing's going to stop them. They'll figure out, you know, what they, what they can do or what they're capable of. They probably discover that they're capable of things that, you know, that they probably wouldn't even re have realized, right? Um, but do you ever deal with people who, who have had accidents and, and now have, are, are disabled in some way who have that kind of like they, they, they're close to giving up or they're giving up? And, and how do you kind of like, do you, how do you motivate someone like that to... No, you know, there's, there's, there's still stuff out there for you, you know. Absolutely. There's all different types of people, and it's not just with people that are um, going through a physical disability or a traumatic accident. I also notice it in people that look normal, you know. And what I realize is that no matter who you are or where you're from, everyone's going to go through something hard in their life. And 
more than likely more than once. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Life you know, is hard. <laughs> you started public speaking. I did, yeah. And yeah. how, is that something that you always thought were passionate about? Were you, did you have fear of that? Is this something new that you were like, I want to, you know, connect with people yeah, on? You seem like a very confident guy, you know? Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> I think that the accident and having a lot of people and kids uh, ask me questions and sharing my story, just it just developed over time. And mm -hmm. so I became more comfortable with myself and sharing the story. Wow. What, what, so what's your training like? Yeah, I want to know that. Like, <laughs> uh, For the bulk of the season, it's Monday through Saturday uh, training. And then at least three days a week, it's a track session and weight room. And then depending on where I am in season and, and where my body's at, usually I try to do like a morning exercise routine before I start the day. Okay, now when you do the long jump, which is, you're jumping off of your prosthetic? Or your yeah. Jump, yeah, prosthetic, yeah. That, okay, so there's a little, now I'm gonna bust your balls a little bit. There's a little <laughs> bit of an advantage with these blades, right? Because, I mean, I, I've seen a para, a Paralympic athletes that do the sprinting and they're on two blades. Yeah. Because, you know, and they are, I think they go faster, right? Am I wrong? Well, yeah, it's not, it's not quite that simple because it's still the athlete. Like, you can't just give someone yeah, these blades of and, course, and they're of not going to be able to do but it. But they're, yeah. they're making times of, like, okay, this is, you know, they're, 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 they're fast. They're fast on these they're blades. They're for sure fast. Like, I mean, you get that same athlete and you, you put them in, you know, like, if they're able-bodied, they would have yeah. been probably a really good athlete. Yeah. And so you're just putting them in a category, you know, with, with prosthetics and they're just, they're, Pushing the limits, you know, the boundaries. When, when you run the 200, do you do you run against? Uh, are there rules about um, whether you're running against people with one with one uh, prosthetic yeah, there or is two? Now. There okay. is. So, so there's two used, divisions. In the past, it used to not be split, but now it is. Because the per the people on two prosthetic blades are actually going to go faster than the person with one. Am I? Uh, uh, well, here here's the thing. So they, it's like there's a there's advantages and disadvantages of both. Okay. So for a unilateral amputee, where we're just missing one leg. Uh, we have an advantage in the start, where the bilateral amputees will have a disadvantage in the start, and they start coming around when, mm -hmm. like towards the end. That's when they can get their top end speed and they can maintain it better. Wow, man, yeah. that's it's 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 and okay. So and then the Paralympics happen, uh, uh, what like the a couple weeks before, a couple weeks after? Yeah, about a month after the Olympics. Okay, amazing. Yeah, and your real experience was amazing, huh? Yeah, Rio was great. Tokyo was great, too. You know, it was tough uh, in Tokyo without fans and whatnot and, and with COVID. But, you know, it's one of those things that you just focus on what you can control and, you know, let the rest slide. Okay, so we're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, you're going to show us your medal. Yeah, I'll right? show you my medal. I'll show you my prosthetic leg. Whatever cool. you want, man. Awesome. <laughs> I like this guy. All right, we'll be right back. I'm <laughs> with Trenton Merrill. We'll be right back. We're here with Tristan Merrill. Okay, I gotta say, because you seem to have a really good sense of humor, so can I just tell you my own <laughs> experience with, with a friend um, who, who has a prosthetic leg, yeah. but I didn't know when I was, I was in yeah. sixth grade, and uh, he, he had an accident when he was very young. But you couldn't tell, obviously, he walks, you know, we had, I went to private school, so everybody was wearing pants. But then when, when you go out to PE, I didn't even, like, nobody even noticed, like, he was in shorts. The, the prosthetic leg was out, but, like, nobody noticed. Until like we were playing basketball, and then he kind of fell, and then the leg the leg oh, came up. Oh, that's up. great. And then that's, that's what we were. And then some people were like, "What the fuck?" And then it's like that's what we, this is how we were introduced. His name was Mark. Awesome guy. He's like, nice. "Yeah, I had an accident," so he and he put the leg on. It was quite an icebreaker to like yeah. you know, to, oh my God. like you know, he falls and the, and the leg comes off. But he was just so capable and so like awesome, and 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 he played sports and and all that stuff. Um, what was it like for you when you first had to kind of explain or reveal this to people in the beginning was it kind of like a thing for you or you have to uh, kind of like work through that because it seems like right now yeah you're... were you shy about it or yeah. like oh for sure i mean 14 years old and and going back to school that was tough but luckily everyone at the school that i was attending uh knew about what happened they knew about the accident oh, and okay. all my friends knew about it where are you from i'm from orange county San Juan oh, Capistrano. Okay, okay yeah so i was going to j sarah catholic high school at the time everyone knew about it then and then I transferred to Capo, and there's a lot of people that didn't know it. And I was insecure, and I wore pants every day. 
insane. Every day. And then finally when I got to college, I was like, you know what, dude, you can't do this, man. There's hot days and you're sweating. <laughs> Especially in California. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, dude, you just got to be you. And if people don't like you or accept you, then you just got to, like, they don't need to be your friend. Who's I'm not going to like and, 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 and respect this guy? <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys want to see the medal? I, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, no, I was just going to say, I have a little brother who's in a wheelchair. And, yeah. you know, and I know so many people with disabilities. And, you know, I think it's so inspiring to see how that you were able to make, what's the term, lemons out of lemonade, lemonade yeah. out of lemonade. And, you know, I'm curious, you know, when you do your public speaking, you do these different events, like, has there anybody's story that they've come up to that you've been able to inspire them not to give up? For sure. The, the most interesting, in my opinion, was other people that, like, friends that I met in, like, high school or college that would come talk to me about, like, personal issues, whether it was family or drug-related or alcohol. And I thought it was interesting because they were able to take or for some reason find trust in me because of what I've been through. And so it was, it's just an interesting dynamic. Um, and I think that everybody, you know, when you allow yourself to be vulnerable and you overcome yeah. things, there's a lot of the people that you can help just by sharing it. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. nice. Definitely. All right, time to see the medal. Yeah, let's yeah, see let's the check medal. it out. What, so was that from Rio or Tokyo? This one's Tokyo. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I've never seen a medal up close. Well, there you go. <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> wow. <laughs> just kidding. Is it heavy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it wow. Is. Okay, guys, grab it from the sides. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Wow. Well, show it to the camera. <laughs> it looks like it's made of chocolate. Yeah, right? Can you tell it's almost lunch? Wow. That's wow. What did it feel that like to incredible. be on that stage and receiving the medal? So for you know, me... It's a unique experience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. I, I was just super stoked um, that I put USA up on there, on the podium. Yeah. Like, I didn't get to hear my, my national anthem. But I, when I saw the USA flag, I was like, you know what? Cool, I did it. Put USA up there. Wow. So it was a really cool feeling. How wow. many people are competing? Or how, like, how many people were competing in your race? There was eight. Eight, okay. Yeah. Wow. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go no, ahead. Go ahead, you go. Because I was also going to say, when you were talking about like the one versus two, I'm like, I'm sure it's still like the, the muscle that you need to have on your thigh, right? Like how much does it weigh, the prosthetic? This one's pretty light. Shoot, you want to you wanna <laughs> feel it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, how much do you think that weighs? Oh, not even 10 pounds. This is, yeah. is this carbon fiber? Yeah, it's all carbon fiber. Wow. Wait, can we talk wow. about how great these shoes are too? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's actually my follow-up question because I read <laughs> you on your go. website that <laughs> you recently <laughs> got into modeling. I did, yeah. <laughs> Tell I us did. about that. Yeah, it's been cool. So for me, I needed to, to get a side hustle and I want to <laughs> make some more money. Damn. And so modeling was one of the areas that I, I had felt like I wanted to get into for a long time. And then the opportunity just kind of presented itself, and I found a good agency, and we've been grinding. I love it. That is awesome. Okay, so public speaking is, is uh, aside from, obviously, you're going to be competing for, how, long, how much longer do you think you're going to be competing on? So ultimately, God willing, I would love to go to 2028 and end in L.A. Nice. I would love wow. to do that. That's hometown, you know. Oh, are they coming to L.A.? Yeah, I keep forgetting. We're getting oh, the Olympics no in 2028. Yeah. Okay. Get ready for the traffic jams. And, man, oh, we yeah. got a lot of oh, infrastructure yeah. to take care of. Oh, my God. You're so But, yeah, it would be great for you to do that here. For yeah. sure, but and so how old are you if you don't mind me asking? Thirty-one. Okay, so I mean, I, I'm trying to be like the Tom Brady, you know? Be well, healthy, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Still well, good look, to the, go. these, these <laughs> days, uh, there's a lot of athletes that last a lot longer. You have nutrition, you That's have true, different yeah. training, you know, you have you have certain things that that can keep you, and and you seem like very lean naturally. So I, I don't see you kind of blowing up and getting <laughs> getting chubby yeah. and getting out of shape you know, anytime I soon. I love Oreos, so don't eat yeah. too many of them. Uh, yeah. That's the trick. Yeah. Your modeling agent will be pissed. So yeah. stay away from the Snickers <laughs> bars, please. Yeah. yeah. So, but where do you right. see it going from here? So obviously, the public speaking is 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 a factor. What 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 do you see yourself doing? And after you uh, aren't competing anymore? Well, I've been getting into like day trading and swing trading in the stock market. Um, I really, really enjoy that and I'm learning a lot. I've learned a lot this year. So I want to continue to do that um, and develop myself uh, financially and understand more about uh, running businesses um, and real estate as well, managing that. So I think like I got a lot going on and I'm, I'm going to continue to focus on athletics, the modeling, the speaking and, and you know, financial stuff and kind of like let that platform grow as much as possible mm -hmm. and see what doors open and then uh, go on from there. Well, I mean, this is opening up doors for you in terms of meeting people from various, you know, various walks of life oh, and businesses sure. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And uh, obviously, you know, they're going to remember you, you know, so now you can yeah. kind of capitalize. I met two great people today. I met JB Smoove outside, oh. the comedian, yeah. And then uh, I met Omar. Um, oh, inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's going to win our next tape. liver? I thought you were no, saying No, 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 no. I'm just saying. <laughs> For a second, he goes, two people are like, wait, there's three of us. <laughs> I was like, bye, baby. I was like, bye, baby. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked about the modeling. That's amazing. <laughs>